think about that um that Snoop project, I guess a collaboration that came out today. Um it was Death Row in the Summertime. I think I got the cover right here. Yeah. Death Row Summer 2022. Snoop has the game on lock right now, Mike. I love what Snoop is doing, man. He's got death. Think about it. He owns Death Row, but he runs Def Jam. Well, Much yeah, like he got a position at Def Jam, yep. Well, he's running a position at that. He's yeah. running the division of Def Jam. He's Snoop. So I want to say this again. He's Snoop. There's only one person that's the author of two of the ten greatest rap albums of all time. This is that guy. He's not, hold on, how about this? Lyrically, oh, he's not Eminem, Nas, Rakim, Black. He's not, but he's the author of two of the 10 greatest rap albums of all time. But right now, Mike, he is literally running a division of the most important East Coast label that ever existed. And he literally owns the most important West Coast label that ever existed. And let me tell you what he is actually doing with that. You said that he is showing what an executive can do. Yeah. I actually want to take it. I actually want to take what was that? a level. You live, know, you know, it's the summertime. You know, it's the summertime. You, st- <laughs> you know, I'm in my basement. It's the summertime in the country in the sticks. It just stormed out here, so ain't no telling what's gonna fly in here. <laughs> was it a bird or I something? I don't even know what that was, Mike. That's what I'm saying. I just about saw you where jump. I, I was like, over here looking at the page. Right. Like, that's I don't even go know viral. what that was. It's probably gonna stay over there. That's but gonna anyway. go viral. Watch out down there. I'm not afraid, Mike. My family, <laughs> my family been owning land since slavery ended. I done chopped the head off of snakes, hunted deer, drank water from a well. We from West Boulevard. But yeah, anyway, he was saying that um, Snoop. As an no, executive. Snoop. What he is really proven to be. You talked about it on an executive level. I want to talk about it, actually, like st- a, a few steps down on the hierarchy. He's proven himself to be the best A and R in the game. He found some really good talent. I mean, I feel like we've said all this stuff before because the last no, compilation no, no, no. he put out, we said the right. same stuff. Like, October London is so dope. And when I saw LaToya Williams on here, I was like, yo, I've been wondering what LaToya Williams was, man. So I, can we piggyback? Incredible. So I'm about to piggyback right off you, the way you piggyback off me. This is what I mean when I say he's the best A&R in the game because these artists, I wasn't familiar with, but then I listened to algorithm and I'm like, man, I need to check for these guys. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell you when I realized he's the best A&R in the game right now. And he is truly trying to cultivate artists the way that Dr. Dre cultivated him. Mm-hmm. I want people to understand this. Deep cover comes out like fall of 1991. You don't get doggy style until winter of 93. Yeah, it's two and a half years of real actual label work and cultivation specifically by Dr. Dre and the DOC. And what Snoop is really doing is for artists what got done for him. And so when I heard October London and Latoya Williams on the Mulholland Drive track, yeah. you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Mike, that's my favorite song this year. I don't give a damn about no yeah. rap shit. It's a beautiful I don't give record. A, that is a beautiful record. That's the best song. When I, I saw them year. on the track I'm list together, track. I almost just skipped right, right up to it because I know what they bring to the table, and I wasn't disappointed. Right, and so when I mean, hold on, I didn't know who October London was until Algorithm mm-hmm. last year, and now I'm hearing him on these records, and I'm like, I was like, the, 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 I said, did October London on the Toy Williams just give me Marvin and Tammy vibes in 2022? Yeah. Did they give me October Marvin London and Tammy vibes in 2022? Like and, then, and then I said, where is this nigga project at? And that's when I realized this nigga Snoop Nunn did his job because I'm asking about an artist project mm-hmm. that I've only heard on your compilation albums that got released late last year and early this year, he's doing real A&R work and building a buzz for these artists the way it got built for him. No, the chick right. who did the reggae check, I'm checking for her too because I was checking for her on the last joint. Uncle Chuck. Because, I um, never heard of him. He brought like an old school vibe going on. Hold on, hold on. What's her name? Jane Hancock. Yeah. Yeah, when she did the reggae joint, I'm like, oh, she flipping it now, too? Because for me, she was the highlight of the Algorithm album. Yeah. And this is what I mean about real A&R work. Because I've listened to Algorithm, and because I've listened to the Death Row Summer 2022, I'm officially trekking for these cats. And then he sprinkles in enough 
of the classics like he did on the previous one, like the Whoop de Whoop joint with Dog Pound mm-hmm. and the bad joint that's produced by Hit Boy. Snoop knows how to put together projects, man. It's Look crazy. here, when I heard the Hit Boy beat, I was like, yo, I was like, Snoop's major. Yeah. Because if I was Nas and I was making KD3, I wouldn't let that beat outside my camp right now. <laughs> Brian, right. Brian with the Super right. Chat I says. I wouldn't let that beat outside right now. Brian with the Super Chat says, I really want y'all to uh, review Relapse one day. That's the album with by far the most Dr. Dre beats. Eminem's prime form on this album, career highs like Stay Wide Awake and Deja Vu. It's a cult classic. I'm going to go back and listen to it. I'm going to be fair, man. I know people think that, you know, I be hard on M, but, you yeah, know, pause. I'm just getting it. Yo, yo, people is in the chat clowning me because of that thing that buzzed by. I still yeah. don't know what the hell that was that buzzed by, though, Mike. You understand that? That's crazy. I it's mean, something. people understand. Better, hold on, hold on. I want people to understand out. something that's not following us the way that they were following us a year ago. I had an episode last summer in this house where okay. there were birds down here. And during an episode... I literally had to walk upstairs and go outside. And when I say walk, I mean run <laughs> upstairs and have the rest of the podcast outside on the back steps of my porch and my patio outside. This is a true story. I live in the sticks. Hudson and there's like says a we didn't... right here. There's a vent literally right here where I do the podcast at. So like all type of stuff. Fly. It's hot, Mike. We in the country. And so like shit be like flying in. <laughs> And yes, nigga, I grew up around gunshots. So if anything buzzed by me and I don't got my pistol on me, damn right. We ducking, dodging, hiding. You got to do what you got to do. Might, I might be more scared of a bird than I am of a gunshot. And that's real. <laughs> it's for real. Remember when Dave Chappelle made that comment about how, like, niggas is more scared of, like, mosquitoes and, like, flies and they are gunshots? No, that shit's real. If, like, niggas be shooting on the east side, I'd be like, oh, they're shooting from the west. We got about 10 minutes before we got to go. Bird flying this motherfucker. I'm like, nigga, we got to be out. It's anarchy. Creating a viral moment, man. Um, no, it's beautiful. Hudson cool. says that you um, put this moment on YouTube. Hudson says that we didn't trash the Drake album enough. <laughs> it really wasn't too much to go on, man. It's like Hold on, you, you know, know. I think what needs to, what needs to be put in perspective is just his overall status as a artist in um, as an MC in hip hop. Because it I think hard. that he's he's overstated a lot when it comes to his MC ranking. It was hard to take notes on the album because it yeah. was so poor. And I'm not joking or being facetious when I say that. It was really hard to take notes because it's like, well, if I take notes on this, it's going to seem like I'm kind of like sticking a knife in a dead horse. It's like, well, the horse already did. It didn't already bled out. It's like, yeah. I don't need to stick the knife in. The album's not any good. And, and, and I'm not joking when I say this. He's got enough of a, he's got enough of a career. And other things going on. Didn't this dude host the ESPYs? That was a while back, but yeah, he's done it all. I mean, no, no, no. He needs to get his LL Cool J on. You feel me? Yeah, I, I agree keep with saying that. to say Wayne is the MC when people talk about Drake, and I'm like, why are y'all talking this way about Drake when Drake's not Wayne? Do you see the evidence that I'm talking about now? You hear how Wayne's been rhyming the last two years and how we're talking about this album, right? And because Wayne's you, the MC. When you say that. I say they talk about him being a hit maker. I'm like, Future's the hit maker. And we're seeing that. Well, I'm double down on that notion. Well, he can't he go to future. future. Well, he can't go to Future right now because he can't go to Thug. And we know exactly. how that looks. Exactly. And so, like, it looks like his well is a little dry. Yeah. But then you got somebody like Wayne that can get on tracks with AZ and Conway yeah. or whoever at will because he's an MC's MC. Even if you don't like the real G's. Moving silence like the Zanya line. Wayne is an MC's MC, and he's the one that's really a top notch all time MC. Not Drake. Drake's not a top notch all time MC. Well, you brought up something interesting. Why can't Drake get on, like, I mean, because I thought him and Benny had a record, right? Like, why can't he get on, like, a West Side album or, you know, he is an MC. Hmm? He's not that on the mic. That's what I'm kind of, that's what I keep trying to say, because he's not that on the mic. He's never been that on the mic. Like, hold on. You see how Logic just called on AZ? Mm-hmm. You'll never see Drake call on AZ. That'll be embarrassing. You remember when, remember when Wayne did the Carter for all the interludes? No, no. Wayne cool with Tech 9 and Andre and Nas and well, Bun and well, Buster. See, Drake well, used to rap saying, with, with can L. Zion actually, back in the day. He can actually, no, he can actually rap at that level. Right. Which, he's rhyme with Fontaine and L. Zion back in the day, too. 
I don't Who? know if it's one of those things. Drake. Who? Drake, you remember when Drake got on that Ninth Wonder track with Elza and uh, Fonte? No, I don't. Yeah. Look it up on YouTube. I mean, but see, I don't know if it's one of those things where it's like, you know, I'm just so big now. I can't rap with other rappers. And I, think that's, a, and I think that's a very dangerous place to be in. No, because no, no. My Brady favorite Anderson. artist, my favorite Brady. artist, Michael Jackson, was in that place where it was like, you're so exactly. isolated that no, but you know what I'm talking about, how big he is. Like Drake is huge. And I no, think I Drake's so huge that he's isolated in a way where he's not really he's not I don't want to say collaborating, but he don't know what's going on. Like this when album. You're saying that, he's so big. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna just throw some things at you right quick and you tell me how big he is. Mm -hmm. So there are these albums that came out. They're called King's Disease 1 and 2. And Nas is rapping with guys on there like Ace Boogie with the hoodie and ASAP Ferg. Is he too big to do things like that? Yes. Because Nas isn't. Yeah, he is. Okay, so let me explain something to you. That's what's wrong with this conversation about how he gets placed. He's bigger than his skills. Mm hmm Wayne, however, can get on stuff like Do or Die 2. Do or Die 2, independent release yep. with Conway and AZ and earn his stripes and respect as an MC. He can get on Bash Money. On yeah. Hitler wears Hermes 8. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the problem with Drake because here's what I'm saying when I'm saying he's not Wayne. Everything that you just said about Drake, I can say about Wayne, but you can't say what I said about Wayne about Drake. And but, that's the problem. And that's why Drake's not all time great. What is because he even thing if in too? your own camp, Wayne can do everything that you just did and work with those artists, but he can come back down here and do this super exactly. lyrical rap shit and excel at it. He's on Conway's album with Ross and, and, and with Ross too. Um on God Don't Make Mistakes. That's what I'm saying. It's like, no, no, well, no, he'll go do the joint. This is the like, thing, too, Coop. Even when Wayne was at his height, when he was the biggest artist in hip-hop and moving a million in a week, he was still working with everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a thing in hip-hop where you can't get that big, where you're just... I mean, I think Jay and Drake are like the few that kind of do it in that way, and we don't even look at Snoop like that and I feel like Snoop is probably the biggest hip hop artist of all time, and he works with everybody. Eminem isolates himself too. I think Drake and Eminem isolate themselves the most. Jay Z's just very selective about what he does, right? Because he he basically calculates his steps where it's like I want anything that I do to be a big moment. Andre is kind of he does a little bit of that, but you might see him on some obscure artists, you know, what I'm saying music that you've never heard of. Uh, Johnson Daily Sports with Super Chat says, is Eminem all-time better than Wayne, Raekwon, Nas? I know the answer to the Nas question. It's not better than any of those guys. I think those guys have just done too much, you know? That's what I keep trying to say is that when people talk about Drake and it's like, why are y'all talking about Drake this way when you don't talk about Wayne this way? Yeah. That everything, because Wayne has all the things that Drake has, but he has all the all the MC things that we like as well. KD like, says Drake. Drake don't got no Carter too, Mike. He don't have no money on my mind or oh, no. Oh no, or no uh, Fireman or Mo Fire. Or it's just like man, this nigga rapping his ass off. Right, right. And I, I think that's the problem. Rapping his have. ass off. You hear this nigga rapping his ass off right now? Do you hear this nigga rapping his? Drake don't have nothing like that. We like this nigga rapping. His